Hi everyone, my name is Harriet Gaffney and I'm the Arts Development Officer at Surf Coast Shire and I'm very excited after two days we've finished hanging the works for the 23rd annual Surf Coast Arts Calendar. We've got our judges. Hi, I'm Libby Stapleton, Mayor of the Surf Coast Shire Council and we've had such a terrific time judging the winners of the Surf Coast Arts Calendar competition today. Hi, I'm Robin Seymour. I'm the Chief Executive Officer. Thank you to all of our artists who've contributed to this amazing event. You are all incredibly talented and it was a really tough call for us to decide on the top 12. These gorgeous sculptures are called Extravagant Birds and they are by Veronica Phillips. She's led the development of these fantastic works with primary school children from Lawn, Deans Marsh and Winchelsea. And you'll see from each and every one of them that each of them have their own personality and character and they've been made with wire and other materials that the children found um, on their properties and on their farms um, across the hinterland and Lawn. These are fabulous. Well done kids. Here we have Here Comes the Sun by Sue Corbett. Um, Sue, Sue's marble sculpture is uh, just so full of hope and warmth and sunshine. It immediately captured um, my attention and I just love the, the uplifting um, nature of it and just the fact that I guess it, it speaks to sort of uh, all of us looking forward to a more positive future after I guess the, the darkness that we've been through and I, I just really love this work by Sue. Well done. This fabulous work is by Susie Powell and it's called Under the Sea and uh, Susie has collected all of these pieces of rope um, from across the beach and brought all of this detritus together into this gorgeous and cheeky um, artwork with this fantastic prawn. So here we have um, Alexia Bennett's The Point of Tea and Scones and Alexia's won our youth category with this um, wonderful lino print which just is uh, a representation of the iconic Split Point Lighthouse Tea Rooms up in Aries Inlet and I know for Alexia and her family this was a, a real haven and a, a place that they uh, were drawn to during lockdown um, to escape and enjoy some of those magnificent toasties that the tea rooms are famous for, not to mention their tea and scones. I think that's the point. Uh, this uh, beautiful photo is taken by Romy Roach uh, and it is called The Jewel of the Sea. And this photo depicts something that is so familiar to anyone who lives on the surf coast. The storms that roll in on after, on after a hot summer's day or in the winter even, but this particular one is from the hot summer days. There's been the hot northerlies and now this is the cold front coming through. And I think that these clouds are just amazing. I love them. Well done. This is uh, Ruminating by Sarah McLeod Moore and it was uh, it had unanimous support from the judges. Uh, it certainly captured our imagination and our, our attention straight away. Um, clearly, kangaroos are an important part of Anglesey and the, the broader Surf Coast region, but to, to see the kangaroo depicted there in a human setting um, is just a really interesting way to to capture the relationship that we have with kangaroos, um, whether that be in the natural environment or in our home. This fantastic work is by Barbara Bateman and it's entitled Another Kind of Otway Experience. And one of the really amazing parts of the surf coast is the heathlands and, um, and the mountains around um, the surf coast. So I love this work, I love the the movement and shapes of the trees. I love the undergrowth. It reminds me so much of the time, the wonderful times I've spent walking in the heathlands around Anglesey. This is a great work. This is a, a very interesting piece of work called Houses of Old Anglesey by B. Lipson. And it's just um, a really interesting exploration to capture some of the old um, coastal houses that are familiar to many of us in Anglesey. I think Bee um, recently renovated a house and through that process became really interested in some of the old uh, coastal structures that still exist around Anglesey. And I think it, it's going to be a, a really important piece of our social history and a great way to capture um, the essence of the, the seaside village that Anglesey still retains.
This is Emma Webb's um, artwork called Surfing Experience. And this shows really clearly the talent and joy of women in the surf coast um, getting out there in the waves on their surfboards. Um, the talent, the companionship and the joy of surfing on these beautiful waters. This piece is called Australian Magpie, The Observer by Angeline Poole. And uh, who can't love that cheeky look on the magpie's face? And no doubt the observer has uh, seen many things through COVID, but I think also many of us have enjoyed its magnificent singing voice and uh, just the, the cheeky entertainment that magpies provide in our backyard. This is Kathy Harry's um, Xantheria. These beautiful grass trees are symbolic of the times that the really tough times we've all been through, but also the, the potential. And we all know that when a fire goes through, these beautiful grass trees sprout again and that gr vibrant green um, of new life and new opportunity is such a beautiful part of the history of these grass trees. From Jan Jack to Winky Pop by Elisa Zoroquin, this beautiful uh, piece of art, wearable art, one might say, um, has been inspired by her walks um, through the natural vegetation from Janjuk to Winky Pop and just um, acknowledging and admiring the natural forms and uh, she's been inspired by the intricate parts of nature to create uh, this beautiful piece of art which we can wear and enjoy. So well done Elisa, it's just gorgeous. So this year we did have such a you know large range of entries and we found it too difficult to choose so we have introduced a highly commended category. So the first work that we've highly commended is Joe Bangle's Cliffhanger. I think all of us you know adore a fairy wren um, and just seeing the juxtaposition of these tiny very very sort of you know never still birds against these beautiful oak cliffs is just a beautiful sort of moment of stillness. So well done Joe. The second of our highly commended this year is Roger Brown from Torquay and his beautiful work Dragon out of Huon Pine. One of the things that we really liked about this work is not only sort of Roger's incredible handling of this extraordinarily sort of dense and hard wood, but also the generational, the intergenerational aspect of Roger's practice. You know, Roger learnt to carve at the knee of, you know, his grandfather and things back in the 40s. And now he, you know, actively passes that those same traditions on to people every year during the arts trail when he teaches, you know, young people and any adults that want to learn how to carve themselves. So Roger, we love your work. Thank you so much. Okay, and so our third highly commended this year is Belinda McKenzie's fabulous The Warrior. Uh, this piece has been made using echo dyeing and felting and Belinda has also used wire and woven wire to make this sort of midriff piece and the necklet, etc. She's collected emu feathers from the local area as part of it. And I really love the way that it combines sort of this very fragile, you know, the fragility of it with the strength of the materials. Felting is an incredibly, you know, felted wool is a really strong material and it has this overall delicacy and beauty. So Belinda, I'd love to see more work like this from you. I would look forward to what you put in next year's show. We've had such a terrific time judging the winners of the Surf Coast Arts Calendar Competition today. Um, really hard decisions to make, but fortunately you now have an opportunity to come in and vote for the People's Choice Award, um, choosing the artwork that you'd like to see on the front cover. As of 6pm on Friday night, you can vote online, or if you'd prefer to come in person to the Anglesey Art Space, uh, you can wander around, have a look at the terrific range of artworks that um, our local artists have submitted for the competition and that will take place until the 31st of October. So get your vote in before the end of the month and you'll get to see what's chosen for the front cover of the calendar.